I want to demonstrate a new feature added in C-Sharp version 8, where interfaces can include default implementations. Earlier in this tutorial we discussed that with interface code implementations for interface members was not possible. This has changed in C-Sharp version 8, where default implementations are now possible for members of interfaces. If you wish to upgrade to C-Sharp version 8, one way to do this is to upgrade your version of the .NET Core SDK to 3.0 and install the latest official release version of Visual Studio 2019. If you haven't already installed Visual Studio 2019, I've included a link below in the description to a video created for this channel that can help guide you with this installation process. If you have already installed Visual Studio 2019, but you have not yet installed the latest version of this software, you can use Visual Studio Installer for this purpose. I've included links below in the description to URLs that contain content that can help you with this upgrade. So in order to demonstrate this new default implementation functionality for interfaces in c -sharp, let's say that we have released a version of this code to clients, and now we wish to include additional functionality for a subsequent release. More specifically, let's say that we wish to add a new method that will retrieve additional information from an employee's data. We already have the getBasicInformation method for retrieving basic information for employees, so let's create a method named getAditionalInformation. And you can see that if we add a method definition for getAditionalInformation to the iEmployee interface, that this breaks our application because we are violating the rules enforced by the c -sharp compiler whereby a class that implements an interface must implement code for all its members. So if we hover our mouse pointers over the red squiggly line presented under the I employee text in the employee class definition, we can see that c -sharp has presented us with an error message stating, employee does not implement interface I employee dot get additional information. So let's say for the moment we want to include the new get additional information method in the I employee interface but we don't yet know which additional information we wish to return to the calling client. So we are able to include a default implementation in the iEmployee interface like this. And now we are able to compile the code. Let's say that for now we wish to return the employee's join date and gender property values from the get additional information method. So if a calling client calls the get additional information method like this, the default code we have just implemented in the I employee interface will be executed. This will of course apply to any class in I application that implements the I employee interface. Let's prove this by running the code. And you can now see that the join date and gender property values relating to all the employee objects is now included when traversing the employee's generic list using the right and left arrow keys. So the default implementation functionality for interfaces provided to us in c -sharp version 8 allows us to add a member to the iEmployee interface without breaking existing code. And let's say that the requirement for the getAditionalInformation method has now been firmly defined. We can now implement code for this requirement by implementing code for the get additional information method in the employee class, i.e., the class that implements the iEmployee interface. We can do this by implementing code for an interface member in the usual way, like this. So, say the requirement is that the join date and the gender property values are OK as temporary defaults, but we want our implementation to return the highest qualification property value. OK, let's run the code. And you can see that the highest qualification property value is now included in the output rather than the join date and gender property values. So let's prove that c -sharp versions prior to version 8 do not support default member implementations for interfaces. So if I right click on the property node in the Solution Explorer window and click the property menu item, then on the application screen, we change the target framework to the previous version of the .NET Core runtime installed on this PC. 
So I'll change the version of the .NET Core runtime for this project to .NET Core version 2.2. The effect of this change is that version 8 of the C-sharp language will not be supported for this project. And now you can see that the C-sharp compiler is flagging an error. If we hover our mouse pointers over the red squiggly line under the Get Additional Information Default Implementation of the I Employee interface, you can see a compile time error is presented. And this message states, Feature Default Interface Implementation is not available in C-sharp version 7.3. Please use language version 8.0 or later. Target Runtime doesn't support default interface implementation. So I think that message is pretty clear. Right, so I'll change the .NET Core Runtime version back to .NET Core version 3.0. And you can see that the default implementation for the Get Additional Information method is once again accepted by the C-sharp compiler because C-sharp version 8 is now supported for this project. So up until now, we have focused on implicit implementations for interface members. A developer is also able to create explicit implementations for interface members. Let's create an example to explore what is meant by an explicit implementation of interface members and how explicit implementations for interface members can be useful. So in this tutorial, we have created our classes and interfaces manually. But we are able to generate code that serves as a starting point for classes and interfaces through appropriate templates provided by Visual Studio. So to add an interface in this way, let's right-click the property node in our Solution Explorer window. Let's then select the Add New Item menu item. We are then presented with the Add New Item dialog box. Let's select the List Item Marked Interface. Let's give our new interface a name. We'll call this interface I Apartment. And then let's click the Add button. And the interface file, which contains the basic code for an interface structure, is generated for us by Visual Studio. So let's create a read-write property definition of the integer data type named ID. Let's add another property definition, which represents the floor number where the apartment is situated. And let's add a read-write property definition, which when implemented by a derived class, will store the size of the apartment measured in square meters. This property is of the double data type and is named size in square meters. So let's add another two interfaces. The first interface is named iDimension metric. It contains a method definition for a method that returns a value of the double data type. This method is named get size. So the second interface is named iDimension imperial. And notice this interface also contains a definition for a method named get size that returns a value of type double. Both the iDimension Imperial interface and the iDimension metric interface contain definitions for a method named get size, and their method signatures are identical. So let's add a class and name this class apartment. And let's write code that implements the three interfaces that we just created. Namely the iApartment interface, the iDimension metric interface, and the iDimension imperial interface. Let's then implement the members for the iApartment interface implicitly like this. Now let's explicitly implement the getSize method for the iDimension metric interface. So if we hover our mouse pointers over the red squiggly line under the iDimension metric text in the apartment classes class definition, then click show potential fixes, then click the option marked implement interface explicitly. Visual Studio generates an explicit implementation for the getSize member contained in the iDimension metric interface. And now let's follow the same steps for the iDimension Imperial interface. And you can see that we now have two explicit implementations for the getSize method. One implementation for the getSize member contained in the iDimension metric interface, and one for the getSize member in the iDimension Imperial interface. You can see that there is a very obvious difference between these two method definitions. The one getSize method definition has iDimension metric dot 
prefixing its method name in its method definition. The other get size method definition has I dimension imperial dot prefixing its method name in its method definition. Both get size methods do not contain any access modifiers. So you can immediately see the difference in signatures of the get size methods that are explicitly implemented and the other members of the apartment class that are implicitly implemented. So you may have guessed this, but the get size method that implements the get size member of the I dimension metric interface will return a size represented as a metric value, i.e. measured in square meters. So this method will simply return the value stored in the size and square meters property. No additional calculation in this method is needed. In the get size method that implements the get size member in the I dimension imperial interface, we need to perform a mathematical calculation. We do this by multiplying the value stored in the size and square meters property by 10.746. This will give us the equivalent size measured in square feet. We can then round off the result to two decimal places by using C-sharp's inbuilt math classes round method like this. So let's look at how to write code to use explicitly implemented interface members from calling client code. Let's go to our main method. Let's write code to create an apartment object. So if we wish to execute the code for the apartment class's get size method, that is an explicit implementation of the iImperial interface's get size method definition, we need to define an object variable of type iDimensionImperial and assign the apartment object to this variable. And if we wish to execute code for the apartment class's get size method, that is an explicit implementation of the I dimension metric interface's get size method definition, we need to define an object variable of type I dimension metric and assign the apartment object to this variable. Let's write the code that writes the return values of these two methods to the console screen. And you can see presented to us on the console screen the size of the apartment represented by the imperial value in square feet and on the following line the metric value equivalent in square meters. Excellent! We've discussed the rules associated with interfaces and how to apply them in code to implement a structural design for our applications. We've discussed and demonstrated how interfaces and abstract classes can be applied in code to abstract common functionality that can be used by multiple types. We've discussed and demonstrated how abstraction in object-oriented programming can be applied to ensure common functionality is implemented just once in code for an application. We demonstrated that interfaces can only contain member definitions and not code implementations for those members. However, a new feature was released with C-Sharp version 8 which allows developers the ability to implement default implementations for interface members. This feature provides the benefit of adding new members to interfaces without breaking existing code. We looked at the implicit implementation of interfaces and the explicit implementation of interfaces. We demonstrated through a code example how to consume explicitly implemented interface members from client code. Please like, subscribe, share, comment to support the channel. It will be greatly appreciated. And please ring the bell so you can be notified of future content which will be coming soon. As always, the code created for this tutorial can be downloaded from GitHub. A link to the appropriate repository has been included below in the description. In the next tutorial, which will be the 21st part of the C-Sharp for Beginners course, we'll focus on exception handling. Thank you and take care. Mm -hmm.